This video concerns a, the topic of commuting operators and their relationship to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. So when we first introduced uh, the concept of the operator, we said that in general it was true that they did not commute, or another way of saying that was it mattered the order of operations that we applied to a particular function. So for example, here my inequality explicitly states that we, we cannot count on the fact that if we operate on a function with B first followed by A operator, which I'm showing here on the left hand side of the equality, that that is not necessarily equal to operating first with the A operator on F followed by the action of the B operator on, on that um, resulting uh, operation. We're going now to define what's called the commutator operator, and this is written down um, notation-wise as brackets with the two uh, operators of interest uh, written down inside with a comma between them. And it's defined simply as the a uh, action of the B operator followed by the action of the A operator on some function minus the reverse operation. And so if we find that the commutator operator is equal to zero for, for a pair of operators, then we know mathematically that these operators actually do commute. So they are a specific case where we actually can count on uh, the fact that the two operators commute. To give you an example of uh, how we can use this new commutator operator to determine whether operators commute or not, let's take an example of something that we've actually thought about a lot, and that would be the momentum operator in the x direction and the position operator in the x direction for a one-dimensional particle in a box. And so if we take our new commutator operator and we have it act on a generic function f, um, the way this is written down is to take that bracket notation for the operator, ha have it act on some function f. Right hand side what we're doing is actually applying the mean of the commutator operator and that is uh, to operate first with the uh, second operator on the function followed by the action of the first operator on the function minus the reverse order of operations. So that's what's shown here in the first line. Then we simply plug in the functional forms for the operators and so for the momentum operator, that's minus IH bar DDX. For the position operator, that's just X. And so we've done that to our two terms here on the second line. And then our first, uh, our first term here has a derivative of a product function X times F. And so we have to apply the chain rule uh, to that function. So we get one term from the chain rule here, a second term from the chain rule on that function uh, X times F. And then the second term in the second line, um, we just distribute that function f through the derivative. Then what we can do is we can note that the first term and the third term are of equal and opposite signs and so they drop out of our expression and so only the second term survives. That second term, the derivative to be evaluated is a trivial one, dx dx which is equal to 1 and so the value of the pxx commutator operator on f is equal to minus ih bar f. Now we really only care if the commutator operator either has a value of zero or non-zero. And so the fact this is equal to minus IH bar times F, that's, that's not significant. What's significant of it is, is that it's not equal to zero. And so this tells us then that PX and X do not commute. Okay. Now the significance of this is that we talked about earlier in our discussion of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle that we could look conceptually at the one-dimensional particle and we could rationalize why was it true that you could not know momentum and position simultaneously and infinitely precisely. We worked through that conceptually. We're going to run into more complicated uh, sets of operators in our, our multi-dimensional quantum models where it's going to be much harder to think through conceptually when does the Heisenberg uncertainty principle apply or when does it not apply. And so with this commutator operator we can just test any two uh, operators we run into and we can just ask the question do they commute if they commute then they do not they do not have their properties constrained uh, by the Heisenberg uncertainty principle our ability to to observe the properties but if they uh, do not commute then we're in the same situation that we were with uh, the particles momentum and position that we cannot simultaneously well uh, define both of them and so that's going to be our test in the future is to use this commutator operator to really just tell us when the Heisenberg uncertainty principle is going to restrict what we can know about uh, any two properties. As long as we know what those operators are, we can use the commutator test to test them.